Hello everybody and welcome to the talk on how to build a positive culture within a game development studio. I'm Pavel and I'm going to share with you some of our experiences, how we approach to build a culture at Pixeland Games. The talk is dedicated mostly to anyone interested in creating positive studio culture, but especially to experienced game industry leaders and studio leadership. One disclaimer though, the talk won't be presenting and offering of ready to use off the shelf solution that can be plugged into any organization. I believe that creating a positive culture requires a lot of work and cannot be hacked or fixed in a very simple way. So bear with me. In, the, in this talk, we'll cover, first I'll introduce myself, then we'll define the problem statement. So why we believe the positive culture is vital in, uh, in the process of creating the long-term organization. Then we'll define the culture and do the breakdown and see what are the components that create a culture. And at the end, we'll do the short wrap up. So first of all, I'm Pavo. I'm co-founder at Pixeland Games and studio director at Sumo Digital. Since the beginning, we're thinking about joining a trustful and experienced partner. That's why we've chosen Sumo Group. And uh, even though our studio is composed of industry veterans, and I mean people with 15 to 20 years of experience, we're very humble and we know that we can learn a lot from more experienced developers than us. Within Sumo, we have the ability to learn from people with 30, 35 or 40 years of experience, which is an amazing opportunity for us to grow. I spent 20 years in professional game, game development. I used to write code. I don't do that anymore but also I'm working closely to engineers and any other game developers in different fields. Majority of my professional career, I spent at Techland, starting as an engine developer and ending up as chief technology officer, responsible for building strategy to be able to maintain multiple AAA pipelines at the same time, sharing the same technology. At the moment, I'm 100% focused and fully devoted to build pixel and game studio culture and on the quest to bring fun back into game development. So let's, let's try to formulate the problem behind the bad culture. I found lately the article published by International Game Developer Association on how a positive work culture can influence teams and the atmosphere within the studio. And the problem might be defined as this. We have seen far too many studios become successful and grow rapidly without investing in a positive work culture. And we all means we all know what does the bad culture means. And I'm pretty sure you've seen all of the buzzy words that I presented here. I know them. I've been there many times. And um, let's try to think of what might be the reason of a bad studio culture. Why studio that grows too fast, they, they don't invest in a positive work, work, work culture and what might be the, the effects of that. So first, let's try to take a look into the root cause of the problem. When I was thinking about different studios, I figured out the diagram who, who, which shows how or which is the common way to create the game development studio. So it all starts with a project on the bottom of the pyramid. So there's like the couple of a group of people and they say, okay, we have the idea. We have the idea for the game. Let's make the game. Once they're like talking about the game and figuring out what needs to be done, they're producing backlog with features, with tasks to do. And to fulfill those tasks, they need to hire more people. So basically in a common way, Game development studios hire hire people hire people for projects, and once the studio grows, it builds culture. Nevertheless, they want it or not, the culture arises in the studio, right? Because more and more people are coming with different point of views, with different values, with different things that are important to them, and uh, as you can see, this structure isn't stable at all. Let's imagine that project has some issues, some challenges. For example, I don't know, there is a problem with budget 
or investment or there is a the, like the new console released by the tech companies and the project needs to change its scope so everything is being dependent on the project and it's like kind of unstable and the way that we propose is not to hire for project but to reverse the structure and uh, start with culture we'll define what the culture is in a moment but let's let's assume that we'll be focusing on the culture first so we'll define the strategy values and then we'll be hiring people for the culture not for the project the project is the latter element that will appear once the culture and the team is being built in that situation everything is very stable even if the project has issues or many projects because that structure allows to to put more projects on it but starting hiring people for culture means that you are project agnostic so you are not bind to project anymore and to any of the project issues and we called that philosophy game dev version 2.0 and why we believe that culture is that much important and it should be done at the first place when i was looking to to various of resources i found out a lot of proofs that positive culture is more productive because it enables people to grow for professional growth it enables motivation it, en it enables sustainability so that's the way that company leaders should focus on how to create their studios and i found like a lot of proofs that a good culture feels like more uh, feel, feels employees to be more responsible to be more supported to um, that enables the culture to growth um, uh, internal motivation and also it's good at the end of the day it's good for the project and for the business and you can take away this slide and show to your studio leaders um, and and any anyone else who does not believe that positive culture is worth investing there are like a lot of studies and a lot of research uh, being done that shows and proves that it's worth to focus on positive studio culture which is good for employees and at the end of the day it's good for your business so how we can create a positive culture let's see what are the components of the culture that we can focus in again i found a very good brochure entitled how to create and sustain a positive work culture released by Interna international game developer association that you can take a look and read it's only like 15 pages long but it's a very good starting point and hint how to start building a positive studio culture and within this brochure it's being mentioned that there are three important components of a culture these are mission goals and values when thinking about it and reading more about it i would put even more components to it to create a culture fully to be treated as this kind of a idea for the company right so anyone can understand what is the company that you're trying to build and what is the future for the company so i would add a couple of more components so besides mission goals and values i would add policies evp um in the vision and we'll be focusing on some of those so uh, as marked here mission values and evp and i wanted to show you how we approach to build those components starting with the culture as mentioned on the previous uh, diagram so let's took out, uh, let, let's take a look into evp which means employee value proposition so there is a tool which helps you to define employee value proposition what is employee value proposition this is something that you can show to to people that you are talking to and say hey this is the the new way how we want to be different than other companies this is the way how we want to make games how we want to grow and this is the the offer that nobody else is offering to you but we are and how we approach that there is a value proposition canva uh, and it's one of the design thinking method um, the strategizer is uh, providing those tools and we use that tool to create a persona so it, our, our developer we found uh, his and her gains and pains and try to figure it out the gain creators and pain relief reliefs relievers and then we ended up with the, with the offer which is called employee value proposition 
and we figured out what can we do in a different way than other studios and uh, how we want to work. And we ended up with a list of features that I'll be showing you in a minute, which can tell you and can tell any other person who is thinking whether to join your company or not, how are you going to do it? What is, your, what, what is the future in your studio? How things are being operated? And as you can see in this example, we ended up with a list of bullet points that shows how we want to deliver value for our employees. So for example, as you can see, by working with us, you can expect to work on the most recognizable top tier AA, AAA titles like Forza Horizon, Hitman, Little Big Planet, and also in collaboration with the biggest partners in the game dev industries, right? So you can learn from that experience to grow because you will have the, you will have the access to top tier game brands and the other hand to the top tier partners within the game dev industry. Also, we are mentioning here the culture of professional growth for not only variety of projects, but also by the access to the game industry experts and veterans, as mentioned with more than 30 years of experience. So that's kind of a offer and, and the, the, the list of, of features that our organization propose to anyone who want to join us. Going further, the next component, which is very important in terms of the culture, are values, but really I'm talking about the true values. So I'm not talking about the buzzy words written on the walls like responsibility or trust or integrity. These are just words and any company can, can have those words, but the question is, are there really a true values? Do you see those values? Do you see those behaviors on a daily basis in your studio? Do you see business decisions made based on that values? So how we approach to build values to be a kind of a guidance and kind of a North Star, how we should operate. So first of all, we created bottom up approach. So we sit down and we started to note what are the behaviors, like very specific behaviors that we want to observe in our company on a daily basis. And for example, as you can see here, work life balance is very important for us. So we stated we take days off we avoid crunch. That's very simple and very specific way of defining how we want to behave. When you look into another group, we don't tolerate mediocrity. We prepare to craft our decisions. We value our time. We commit and deliver. So these are very specific things that we expect in the company to see, either in the teams or in, in um, our decisions or in the people that we are trying to um, to get into our organization, right? So everybody needs to follow those rules. So behaviors are the kind of a rules that we expect to follow. And we group those up into four values that are being, that are our hints how we should operate in a company. And for example, as you can see, one of the values is keep on growing yourself and your skills. And our assumption is, like since the beginning, because we're talking about the culture, that we will be learning from each other and from trustful partner. That's why we decided to join Sumo Group. But also we decided to create multi-project environment that we can learn, learn from different projects. But that's not it, right? Apart from the project, we can learn from any other uh, sources of knowledge, right? So for example, we provide extra five learning days in a year for you to use those days to grow for your professional development. We provide you the access to GDC Vault or to Udemy um, just to find the knowledge and, and you can use that knowledge and, and build uh, your professional growth, right? So that's very important because that drives how com company should operate uh, on a strategic level as well, because it's important for us since the beginning, right? So the values, the living values are all are ultra important and they can't just be a buzzy word like responsibility. As you can see, our values are crafted and informed in a way that they can be treated as a verb or, or, or an action or a behavior that you can, uh, that you can just take and, and plug in, the, in, in the, any organization. 
Okay, and the last component I wanted to mention, the last very important component of the culture is mission. So once we have values, when we have employee value proposition, we should formulate a mission. So kind of a statement that shows where the organization is going. So when you take a look into our mission, you'll see to deliver amazing player experiences. And we could end up here. And I think that 99% of game dev studios, studios could have that mission. We all want to deliver amazing player experiences, right? But the question is how? And in the following uh, part of the mission, you will see how, right? So through AA, AAA games co-development and own IP creation. So we'll have defined two legs of our business. The first one is double AAA games co-development that we can learn new things because of, of the co-development. So we're developing jointly with other partners how to make games. And we're trying to use that experience and cherry pick the best tools and the best practices for our own IP creation process, to create our own, own formula, to create our own IP. Learning that from, from um, most uh, experienced developers around the world. And the last component of a mission is also important. So by fostering healthy, stable and learning driven collaborative ecosystem. So the learning is very important for us and it's even stated in a mission, right? So it's not only learning from projects, but also building the infrastructure and the, I don't know, objective system and bonuses and, and all around self-development, which is very, very important. And it's also stated in a mission. And once we have all of those information, we can use those culture components, for example, in the interview process and sharing those information with people who wants to join a company to see whether they're aligned, whether like the, the, the same values are important for both um, newcomers and, and, and us. So it's, it's, it's ultra important to hire for culture and we're presenting in here how to do it. Um, and now the real time example, right? So we're talking about uh, the culture components and, and uh, how, how to approach that from the theoretical perspective. But let's see how it works at Pixeland Games. So as mentioned, we decided to join Sumo Group because Sumo co-developed already more than 100 games. So we can learn from those games. And right now we can we are supporting six projects currently. So we can learn from different projects, different perspective, different scope of the projects because we're joining teams anywhere between 30 and 150 people. So there are like some small, smaller projects, mid projects, big projects. We can learn from that for our own IP experience. We can also experience different technologies like Unreal Engine 4, Unreal Engine 5 or any other proprietary tech to learn from that and to leverage this experience for our own IP and our own formula to creating, creating our own titles. So that's the setup that we created because we started with the culture, then hired people for the culture and then um, we created the business model that supports our way to create projects. So a short wrap up at the end. So my advice, my first advice would be to focus on culture first. So when you, when you, if you remember the diagram, I would start with a pyramid in the right direction, starting with the culture component at the beginning. And culture component means mission, vision, values, EVP, and we'll be also covering that um, uh, later. So as mentioned, craft values, and I mean living values, right? So these are not words on walls or on t-shirt. They need to be behaviors and group of behaviors that you, you would expect to see in your company on um, daily basis, right? So it's really, really important to find the form which is very um, clear in terms of how to, how to behave, how to operate. Once you have a culture, you can hire for culture, not for a project. Hiring for project, and many companies are hiring for project, even if they say they don't, they're hiring because they have a specific need in a project. If project changes, that's very unstable um, situation anymore, right? Because you might be hiring someone for the thing that you don't need anymore, because it, it might just disappear in the backlog, right? So. Culture is not something that is changing dramatically. It evolves for sure, but it's very stable comparing to the project. So we should hire for culture, not for a project. 
Very important component is walk the talk. So once you create a culture, once you create a values, once you create employee value proposition, it should be a, a living thing, right? So it, it, it's not, it can't be a document, it can't be writ, writ, written on the wall. Culture should start with the founders because if they're like being pushed to, to make difficult decisions in the, in the organization, they will use their own values, not some document that is being written in the organization. Of course, founders need to talk to the team and talk to each and everyone in the organization to craft the values and it needs to be aligned. But founders and top management is responsible for the culture and for executing this culture, right? So walk the talk, which means consistency and being very, um, treating the, va the values very and, and all the, the whole culture very seriously, it's an ultra important. It's not only about crafting culture, it's also about the execution of the culture. That's why it's very important component here. As mentioned during the talk, I would suggest to create employee value proposition with the value proposition Canva. When you have a employee value, pro value proposition, you can talk to people directly on what you want to do, how you want to do it, and especially why your company exists and what can you offer, which is something else that any other company are offering, right? So that's that's ultra important to show what you have on mind, what, you ha what do you have in terms of a long-term vision for your organization to help people make their maybe lifetime decisions, right? Because they might be changing job uh, and it also might be connected to relocation or, you know, to changing some, to making some very hard decision in, in, in their lives. You, you should be able to help them. You, that's your responsibility to tell them everything you know about your idea and your, your, your future of, of, of the studio that you're building on. So you own that to them. And that's why uh, creating EVP is so, so, so important. And also, last but not least, I would say, learn from companies who has done it right, right? So uh, there are like a lot of companies who who already experimented with the culture, who are, who are already um, uh, created a positive studio culture. So you should study, you should talk to them, you should talk to developers, how they feel about it. Or what do they think it's important for the culture? And you should cherry pick the best like components and really think about also the the, um, you know, the, the, the pillars that we've mentioned, um, uh, how to create a positive culture and craft that because that's your responsibility as a studio leadership to, to describe the culture and to, to make sure that all of the elements are fitting together. And uh, the last conclusion, uh, which I found very useful when, when thinking about this kind of a game dev 2.0 uh, philosophy, is the formula that might be a visualization on, of, of everything that, we, that we've covered today. So basically, what I believe is that when you create a positive studio culture, it will be very good in terms of motivation for the team. Because if people are feeling happy, if they're growing professionally, if they're working on something that they like, uh, they're being motivated. The motivated team produces better results because they want to do it. They're like really happy about it. Uh, that's why I, I, I was mentioning that bringing fun back into game dev is very important for us because we want for our developers and for ourselves to have fun with it, right? We're making games, so it should be fun. And when we create a fun games, it's even higher for our motivation. So our motivation is even higher because we're like um, very pleased with our results and there's like nothing more motivating that, that seeing the great results of your work. And even higher motivation means even better games, right? Because it's like, it's the constant loop, um, especially in the long term, that it's really uh, um, our way of how to build game dev 2.0 uh, positive culture. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, I hope you liked it.